Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand. With your host, Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com. And welcome to Pattaya and welcome to Thailand. It's going to be a good one today. It's going to be nice and hot. Uh, people in the studio and the man himself on the controls at the end, Bobby. Uh, welcome to the show today. I'm excited. Brian's an interesting dude. Yeah, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't swear, don't shout at him or anything. He's he's a tough dude. I'm a Catholic boy. (laughs) Brian Jacks, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, sir. It's very kind of you to have me. It's okay. They paid us lots of money. Please please tell that man at the end if he says anything, I should throw him over this table. (laughs) Yes, it's got. I'm still. I'm still really. <laughs> we got a badass time. in the studio. We got He's a still badass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome to the studio. It's nice to have you Thank in you here. Thank you very welcome much. For to, us. Welcome to Talking Heads. Uh, I've been going a few weeks now, doing rather well. Okay, uh, a lot of people are in the studio today, but of course we're concentrating on you today. Good. Good. Nice Thank to have you. Right. So let's let's start right at the beginning and take you way, 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 way back to the day you was born. So that's the best. That's the best place to start. Uh, down in London, yeah. Yeah, I was born in Stepney, in the east end of London. Uh, my father was. Uh, a chicken plucker, <laughs> uh, that is plucker, <laughs> and um, he uh, he became a taxi driver when I was about three years old, mm-hmm. under cab driver. Funny thing is, actually, he um, he became a cab driver. Now nowadays, it takes three years to learn the knowledge. He did it in seven months exactly. That's to learn all the streets and the yeah. the, the, the routes and everything. Uh, what, what year uh, was that, Brian? Can we say? Oh, back in 1948. 1948. Yeah, wow, forty nine, forty nine, yeah, forty nine. So yeah. that's that's like the uh, the carry on days. I also remember um, Sydney James and all those in the in the, in the black cab. If you remember all those and Hattie Jakes and all that. I mean, what was it like growing up there? Oh, it was great. I mean, we we, we lived in uh, uh, just just off of um, Brick Lane, mm. Brick Lane itself. Mm. And uh, I remember, our, I mean, I was very young there. We had a massive flat there, which. Um, you don't get nowadays. They normally mm. they got smaller and smaller, haven't they? And I remember we That's had the a, price, Brian. Yeah, we had a we had a snooker <laughs> table in the flat. But that, now they're about as big as a snooker table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the reason I remember that is because <coughs> sorry, my uh, my my younger sister, I I, I, th- I must have she must have been two and a half, three, um, and she she got me up out of the bed and we painted the snooker table legs because they were painting the flat. So we decided to paint the legs of the cinema. Dad weren't very happy at all. What, so so what, what colour were you painting the flag? Can you remember? <laughs> sort of pink or something? <laughs> it, was, it, was, what, well, it was funny, but... Well, it wasn't funny. very happy. What about, what about schooling? I mean, you know, can we take you back to your schooling days? How did you get on? Was you good, bad, whatever? Um, I, no, I, I, I was all inter- only interested in sport. Really. Mm. I'm not interested in anything else. Mm. Um, just, you know, I just weren't interested in learning... I just wanted to get out in the playground, play cricket, play football, and play. I, you know, I played rugby. Um, then my dad, when I was nine years old, took me to the judo club. Mm. Um, that's that's quite a story on its own because what happened was dad started judo about a year before I knew anything about it. Um, so we're talking what? We're talking well, way back in the fifties. Yeah, fifties. Yeah, fifties. Yeah. Late fifties. Yeah. Mm. Um, what happened was he was a cab driver and he, he was a bit worried about getting mugged. Um, in those days, makes can't, sense. Can't, yeah, makes sense. He wanted to lose weight because you know he didn't want he didn't want to get too fat like my friends uh, <laughs> not very far away from me now. <laughs> who's, la- who's so lazy? Won't I even thought, thought it was a bit of a squeeze in the studio <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> He's so lazy, won't even come out riding on the bike with me in the morning. And uh, the, no, he was getting fat. He want he uh, wanted to lose weight. Um, he wanted to keep fit, mm. and he wanted to learn how to protect himself, so he started judo. Now, the, the, the amazing thing about it was that he did it for about nine months, ten months before I knew anything, and he said to me one day, he said, there's a big show on at the Chelsea Town Hall, um, and uh, he, he's going to take me along to sit. And he said, it's judo. I didn't have a clue what judo meant. because Never I was, heard I was, of it. No, I, never, I was only eight years mm. old. Anyway, we get there and there's a big audience and it, 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 it's unbelievable. It was the London taxi drivers police judo, uh, versus the police judo team. Oh, that'd go so, down well today, wouldn't it, yeah, that one? Hey? It, it, was fan- <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> so you had, the, the, you had 10 cab drivers and 10 policemen. And when they lined up against each other, I mean, I was only eight at the time, 
Um, but you wasn't involved at that time. No, in, no, in, no, not just, at all. I didn't you, even know anything you, about you. You were just like a bystander with a popcorn and watching. That's and right. That was I didn't it, yeah. know anything. I didn't know my dad did judo. I didn't huh. know what judo was. I mm. didn't know what it meant. Um, I get to the Chelsea Town Hall. I'm sitting in the in the audience, and my dad comes out on the stage, you know, up on a, and uh, he's got this judo kit on, and all the all the cab drivers were on one side, ten of them, and the ten police the other side, and the police at that time. It, it, the listeners might appreciate this that you had to be a minimum of six foot tall to be in the Metropolitan Police at that particular time. You don't now, but so they were all much taller than the cab drivers. And it looked like, you know, it looked like a, a, a <laughs> giant. So David and Goliath? At, I'm looking at the, and the tallest, believe it or not, the tallest one was the guy opposite my dad. And I thought, oh, no. He's going to get hammered. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, they, they took hold. The referee said begin. They took hold. They took three steps to, as I was looking at the stage, to my left. And my dad swept this policeman's feet away and he just went smack on the floor. It was it, three seconds. The whole thing, that, that was it, it was ended. That was my first introduction. Was you, to disapp- you, know. was you disappointed that you never got your money's worth? Oh, no. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm disappointed now because ever since I've seen that, mm. I've beaten people in five seconds, I've beaten people in six seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. ten seconds of the fight. Mm, wow. And I was renowned for that when I fought in judo, especially mm. in, in Europe. So taking you from eight but years... I've never beaten him. Never, mm. ever beaten his record. No, I mean... Taking you from eight years old and then going up to what eight. school after that? Where, where, where did you go after that, that school, to your higher school? Was, was there any, like, judo in that school at all, or was there any facilities for it? No, I, there was no... I mean, when, I, when he took me, first of all, to the judo club, there was only one other child, and that was my dad's friend, who was also a cab driver. Oh, in the club. And he was two years older. No, he was two years older than me, mm. and we both went to the club together, because to, no, no children did judo then. Nobody. Oh, surprise! It was, I think it was nineteen. If I'm wrong, it was nineteen fifty-six, fifty-five, fifty-six. Right. So, what at what stage <coughs> of your life did you say to yourself, "This is what I want to do, though. This is what I want to pursue"? Because you did the rugby. Um, I would imagine you was like fitness all the time, wasn't you? Surely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I at school, I, I, I didn't like um, football at all. I love rugby. Mm. I, I just like. So to get we, in there. Yeah, to get in there and have a fight. I mean, we were very lucky because we were one of the first schools, junior schools, to have a trampoline, believe it or not. That was way back then. And I loved all that jumping about mm. and, you know, gymnastics and things like that. Didn't like football, but I loved rugby and I loved tackling people. And, <laughs> and my dad said, come on, get, get along to the judo, you know, get along and we learn judo. And then... It, it all started. So that was was that the only club around at that time? Where, where you went to? It was to the only work? club that that actually had any juniors in. Yes. So yeah. nineteen what the end of what nineteen fifties? Yeah, the, yeah. It must have been fifty forty six, fifty six. Yeah, fifty four. Fifty four. Nineteen fifty four. So yeah. it wasn't so. It wasn't. You're so pretty old, old man. Yeah, it's nineteen fifty four. Did you say he's old? <laughs> he's pretty old, <laughs> man. He's just told you that he's I was born in fifty seven. He's just flawed. Sixty two. He's just flawed a guy in five seconds, and you're telling the dude he's old. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get out of here right now. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, my birthday in, 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 on the fifth of October. So, uh, is it is it on yeah, the fifth of October? Yeah, I'm twenty one then. Again, mm. <laughs> and, what, and what's the other leg? No, seventy four is terrible, isn't it? Really, it's not terrible. No, you, but you, mate, you look really, really good for seventy four. I wish <laughs> I. I mean, I'm not even. I'm, it's my birthday tomorrow, by the way. It is. Yeah, is it fifty nine really? tomorrow? Fifty nine. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday! Fifty nine. Should we give him a rendition? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday to you. He calls me David. My mum calls me David. Well, that's your name, Come right? Here, it, David. It is. I thought you can remember it, David. Around the, around the head all the time. So after you after you've been in there and you've been to the judo school. And you started ju- judo in the classes. I mean, but what part of that, what, what stage did you think to yourself, this is something that I really want to do? This is because everybody has a fad. Everybody has a fad, but they go well, through, they want to be a, a bike driver, a snooker player, this and this and this, and then they, it, it burns out. Well, if I'm very honest about it all, I, I started because dad took me there. He took me with his, with my, well, I call him my uncle, but. Uh, my uncle's young son so the, mm. both of us started together and then more juniors started in the club then the club had a junior section and because we'd started before we had the, the kind of edge on all the rest of mm. them 
But the problem was, bigger boys were coming in there, bigger than us, and older than us, because mm. I was only like eight at nine at the time. And um, then you started to realise that y y if you're small and you're eight, you can, you can actually beat someone who's 10 or 11. Mm. You know, you can actually flip them on the floor or get them in a lock, you know, and, and it starts to give you a lot of confidence. But I didn't get the, I didn't get this feeling that I wanted to be a great judo player. My dad knew that there was something there. Something about you, yeah. that you, you had um, it. He identified it, so, and I think he identified it because he, he had done it himself, you know, and um, he, he, he would only, he'd only been doing it 11 months and he got up to brown, but it was incredible. At that particular point, did you? Time. Is there before we start to get to where you sort of went from the transition of in the club and, and, and the big guys and that? Was, is there any stage before you started getting into a competition state that you thought to yourself, "I, I don't really want to do this"? Do you ever, ever ever have second thoughts about it? No, I never had second thoughts because it, 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 the the listeners must understand that at that particular point in time, it was nobody knew what the hell judo was. Mm. I mean, nobody knew. What, what and what about clubs around the UK? Was was there no, many of no, them? No, there was only two clubs in the whole of the UK. Wow, <laughs> there was there was the Budokai and the London Judo Society. That was it at that particular point in time. Was there was there such thing as competitions between the two clubs? Did you did you ever meet and have competitions, or didn't that exist at that uh, time? No, the, you know, it, it did exist, but not with the juniors, only with the seniors. Because what had happened was that uh, the, the the police had. Uh, got into judo in a big way because of the self-defense angle of it. Mm. Um, and that's how it kind of motivated, you know, that's how it started. But I never had any, I, I, I didn't want to be a great judo player ever. Mm. It just evolved. And then when later on, after I, you know, I kept going to the club regularly mm. because dad was there and I went along with him and, um, you know, I enjoyed the, the fun and the games there and so on. And then when I was, um, I think I was 13, we had this, Julia Peter Sellers Trophy. It was a, a, a competition. That I Peter, love it. I love him. That Peter Sellers had put on. Mm. He he was a member of our judo club. Wow. Yeah. Um, he used to be he used to do judo. I can't. I mean, I, I can remember him, but I can't. Um, the Louvre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Louvre. And uh, it was it, it was the Peter Sellers Trophy, and I you know I, I'm fortunately I won it, which is uh, nice. You know. Still got it, or is it still around? No, no, no. It, it, it went on every oh, year. It was handed won on by someone else. Yeah. So after after you, you you did the trophies and that, I mean, you you moved on, didn't you? I mean, where did you go from there? Well, Dad, I I went into um, secondary school. I was at Forest Hill Comprehensive. Um, the the pe the uh, PE teachers there were very very keen on the fact that you know I'd done judo because they knew about the Peter Sellers Trophy and so on. And then Dad said to me. Um, you know, what do you want to do when you leave school? And I had I no clue. I didn't, you know, when you like when, you, when you're that 13, age, thirteen, you don't, you don't I, really I, know, you know. I want to be a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had no idea. I mean, just None of us do. None of he us. said, "Would you, you know, would you be, would you like to go to Japan to learn judo a bit more?" Um, and that was it. I mean, I, at the age of fifteen years and one day old, I was on a comet plane. Comet, which, which took thirty-eight hours to get from London to to Tokyo, stopping um, in uh, Burma on the way, and about five different countries because obviously the comet couldn't travel too far at that mm -hmm. time because the the fuelage thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ended up at fifteen years and one day getting out of the airport in Tokyo. And what was that like? I mean, that must have been an, an eye opener, surely. I mean, I mean, yeah, well, let's go for it. I mean, you know, when you're in Tokyo, you're there on your own, 15 years, one day old, a couple of shopping bags like the old man's brought today outside, and uh, you're going to yourself, right? Where do we go from here? I mean, it's a, it's a completely different planet. Uh, I've got some pictures here of the day that I actually arrived with a mm. bag and everything um, in my in my telephone pictures, and uh, now looking back on it. It, it was a great experience. The, the the flight was very long, and, and so you know, and, and so forth, so on. But when I actually got there, I lived with a Japanese family for the first three months, um, with another English boy that was there. He was uh, he was twenty one, mm. and um, we shared the house together with the Japanese family. The boss of the family was the president of the World Amateur Wrestling Federation, and he was in Parliament. His wife was in Parliament as well, and his two sons were in America studying um, English in America and at university. So 
us two lads were in the house with the mother of the dad and the, the mother of the mother of the, the grandmother in others. Sounds grandmother. like Cluedo. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, were, like, yeah, we were there with the two grandmothers and uh, by God, I mean, that was an experience. Well, well, surely picking up living with them though, I mean, surely well, you, you I picked couldn't up understand a the word they were saying to start with. That was, a, that was the first big problem. Yeah. The second problem was everything they, you know, the food they put in front of us, it was... It, it was just like, you could have been on the freaking moon, you know what I mean? It was terrible, really. Yeah. Um, so the, and then leaving the house, getting on a train, I mean, can you imagine? You see all this silly Japanese writing everywhere, mm -hmm. you can't speak, no one. And that, it weren't very long after the war. Um, and you'd get Japanese people coming up to me and touching my hair because it's blonde. They actually coming up to me and touching me. They do. They do. They do that. I've been to a few countries where I took one of my daughters. And she's blonde, and, and they just kept coming up and say, "Can I touch your hair? Can I touch oh. your hair?" Can I? For some reason, but you had a nice lock on you, didn't you? Because I've seen a few pictures. <laughs> At one time. Yeah. At one time. <laughs> so going from the house and you're on the train. Whereabouts are you travelling to? Well, first of all, the the house that we lived in. Um, bearing in mind I was only there for three months mm. um, the house that we lived in was on the outskirts of Tokyo and the the the, the, the Kodokan which is the the home of judo was right in the centre and it was right next door to a place called the Korakuen which is um, a, a fun play park mm. with fun fair and it was actually right next door so it was quite easy to get to the only problem was when you got on the train from where we lived, it was like the circle line. It went the train. Ah, the okay. train kept going round and round in a circle, and it'd stop and then branch out. You could get off and go over there, or go over here, go over there, go. Over. Were you taking the train angles. every day? Was you every day. Wow. And so, what, what kind of ride? I mean, the, how long? The, well, the first, the first two or three weeks, we kept missing the stop. We, <laughs> we, we, were, go, we were going the wrong way round on the. We've on, been here before. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, we were yeah. actually. You know, I was actually g getting on the train, going the wrong way round. So <laughs> instead of it being seven stops, it was twenty-seven stops, and uh, you know all sorts of things. Did like you learn that. fast, Brian? Well, you have to. That's <laughs> exactly the point I was going to come to. You have to learn very, very quickly, mm. and um, ha having that experience of looking at the characters to know which way to go, mm. Mm -hmm. Um, and remembering the character of where you got to be, uh, it was it was. Wonderful because that gave you that, um, you know, that confidence. Confidence mm. that you had to do it. You what you've got to do it. And of course, it brings you. I mean, if you coming from London, like you said, in a, and you're in a, you're in this small small uh, school and everything, going over there is a completely different world. It opens up your mind. It opens up your body. Opens up everything, doesn't it? That's right, and, yeah. and suddenly, it's like you're back. You, it's like you're a full grown baby. Because you're back to the learning process again, and exactly. of course, I mean, I've been there, so I know that it's like a big learning process. And and being over there for you, surely, step by step each day, learning the, the symbols and learning which way to go around on a train, which it only yeah. takes it only takes a few times to do that, doesn't it? Oh yeah, you soon learn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, One uh, stop. Yeah, you you, so, uh, remember, I was I was just fifteen. <coughs> yeah, you, sure. Uh, uh, yeah, fifteen and two, three, four, five weeks old. Um, so what I did. It, it, to get this into the brain, I, I laid in bed of a night, and all the whole of the ceiling above me, I put big sheets of paper with the characters on, uh -huh. and I stuck them on the ceiling all the way all the way across my bedroom, <coughs> so I could look up and say that that was Fuji. So this is Tokyo Station, that and that's Katagawa, and so on. So you knew the the otherwise. I and the most been. important one was in the right hand corner. There was <laughs> yeah. this says get off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, make, make sure you get off. Yeah, make sure. Was the so the school was next to the fun fair? Yes. Yeah, right next. So door, how yeah. how was your first day there? Well, no, the re sorry. The reason I, I told you about the fun fair oh, is sorry. because the reason I told you about the fun fair is because that particular station was one of the most famous stations. Okay. Because everybody used to go there to so congregate. Yeah. Okay. For the fun fair, but the problem was when you bought a ticket. Bearing in mind, Tokyo is very, uh, ma there's massive amounts of people in yeah, Tokyo. Mental, yeah, And um, you bought the ticket, and then you you you'd line up waiting to get the ticket. You might you might wait twenty minutes, thirty minutes to get to the front. Seriously, that long, and then getting into the train. You know, they have special people that mm. hold onto the door, put their foot in your back, and push you into the train. I've seen it. I mean, it was I've incredible, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really sardines. So you know, the whole experience was. It, 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 you know, at 15 years old. And 
And whereabouts was the, the actual school where you went to learn? Where was that located? Well, well, if you if if you're looking at a circle, we, we would get on the train on the uh, east side and have to go more or less three quarters away round. Um, the circle. If you, if you went one way mm. or a quarter the other mm. way. Around the bottom bit, so if you got on the wrong side, it took freaking ages. <laughs> <laughs> what was the school like? I mean, what was the first day there like? Um, it, it the, the dojo itself, the, the hall, the dojo is the hall, um, had all the way around the top, it had seating so that you could go upstairs, sit, and watch down onto the actual dojo itself, the mat area. The mat area was suspended so that. At, if you were thrown, it would it would bounce a little bit. Interesting. Which is better than the just floor. putting the mat on the concrete yeah, floor, as you yeah. can imagine. Mm. Um, now, the reason I'm telling the listeners this and telling you this is because I must have landed on that fucking floor <laughs> <laughs> about a million times. Excuse my English, yeah. but quite all I, I got thrown around like a rag doll. Seriously, I mean the the, the standard of the judo there was. It was way beyond what, what my expectations. And mm. at the age of fifteen, wow. they used to have every yeah. every day they'd have mm. at least five universities come to the dojo. So you'd have forty boys from one university, forty from another, forty from this, forty from that, and they'd all intermingle and practice. And uh, I, you, I, I was the, called the dough boy. When you've gone from, yeah, I'm just trying to get this in my head, from, from when you went from the UK and you've won the trophy and you're going over to there, did you approach that as though you sort of, I'm the man and I sort of know everything, and then when you got in there it was like, no, you don't? That's exactly where I was, where I was, <laughs> yeah. where I was going to. I thought, I'd, uh, I, thought I'd, I thought I was a dog's boss. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, there. yeah, because you'd, you'd done everything. Boy, oh, boy, did I get thrown around, honestly. It was like Initiation. a Initiation, that was your initial. Oh, was it was terrible. 15 really. years I mean, old. I, I, and to be honest, mm. It, it was only because my dad had sent me. I kept going back to get more punishment. I mm. can't. I don't know what, what why I didn't stop going there but because the other lad that came over with me was a, a, quite a lot older than me, five or six years older than me. He gave up judo. How? How? He, because of that. When you say going back, I mean, how long did you stay for the first time? Uh, the first time, just on two years. And then what? You went back to the UK. Yeah, I, I went back. F- my, my my mother worked for BOAC. Mm-hmm. She got a job as soon as I left for Japan, mm. um, and a year and a half, two years later, she she was uh, qualified to get cheaper tickets. So, her, my dad, um, my mum, my dad, my sister, and my brother all flew over to Tokyo. They stayed there for two weeks with me, and then we went back. I went back with them um, to England to come back again mm. four weeks later. But when I got back after the three weeks. The Olympic trials were on for the okay. 1964 Olympics. Yeah, this is so, where, I, so, where I'm leading up to yeah, now. Yeah. So Dad said, stay here um, for the next, I think it was about three yeah. months. So for the, for the Olympics that we're going we're gonna to com- come to first, is was there such a thing at that time in the Olympics as a judo uh, yes, it was the first time ever. That was that was the first time. Nin- Nineteen sixty-four. But how? So, is there anybody like what I'm trying to get is who is, who was the person pushing to the Olympics to make it part of the Olympics? Did they have a board or something? Or no? Or, um, if if it, it's, it's quite sim- it's, it, it's quite a great question that really. But mm. It's a simple answer to a great question. But the host country are allowed to pick one sport. So of course. Okay. Japan picked judo mm-hmm. because they they knew that they, yeah, well, they, they were out of the five gold medals that were given away, they won four of them. Mm. Um, they they wanted to win all five, but the heavyweight or the open category was won by Anton Giesink, who was six foot eight inches tall. Um, he weighed about I don't know. Bit heavier than Steve over there. <laughs> <laughs> how, do we, how come every time you mention heavy, you look towards the corner? <laughs> so, no, but that's what I was trying to find out. I mean, you, you've answered the question now that, that was pretty a complicated question, but yeah. a, a simple answer. But I mean, so they you was in that. How did you get into that squad to get into the Olympics? And and okay, how and so how many were in the squad? Right. Well, the exact story is that Japan picked judo. So we'd already established judo because the first country that the Japanese went to to teach judo around the world was Great Britain. Okay. So we had 
the first Japanese teacher was in Great Britain. Mm -hmm. The second was in America. So judo had gone all around the world by that time. Um, we're talking 1960s, late 60s. 60s, 60s yeah. yeah. Um, so what happened was one Japanese had come over and started the Judo Association. Then another Japanese came over to England and started another Judo Association. Then one more Japanese came over. Okay. And so now we have three, now we had um, three different associations. And because Tokyo and Japan had picked the Olympics as their, their special sport, everybody in Great Britain got together and we had... 10 people from each association, mm. so 30 people in each weight compete against each other, and the winner of each weight category... It was the one person to go through. Uh, and I won it. And how, and how many... Uh, congratulations on that. And <laughs> how, how many people actually went to the Olympics to... to can you remember that? To, 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 four. Just four people? Lightweight, middleweight, heavyweight, and an open weight. And you was in... I was in the lightweight. In the lightweight. And uh, uh, what thought, age, then? <laughs> age? What was that age was he then? 17. 17, what was that, 1960... 64. 64. That must have been a mind-bending experience. That was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But it, 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 I, I was very lucky because obviously I'd lived there just before that mm. and I'd only been back for six months and then I went back again. Um, so I, I had a great advantage over the other... I mean, I had a, such a great advantage over the rest of the judo guys in the mm. team. They were all a lot older than me. I mean, the oldest one was 20 years older than me. Uh, Alan Pethbridge just recently died. Mm. Um, of course, when we get to Tokyo, I, had to, I, I looked after them, didn't I? I showed them around and everything. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I got them in the station, got on the train, and as they got on the train, I just walked off again and let them go the wrong way around. <laughs> oh, this was <laughs> give, give them, in Japan, yeah? yeah. Give them a, yeah, in, in, Tokyo. Japan, in Tokyo, yeah, I give them a bit of my own treatment, so it was quite good fun. So you got you let them on the train, yeah? yeah. And you thought, you can have a bit of what I had yeah, to learn. Yeah, yeah, you go the wrong bloody way and see how far you get. <laughs> Oh dear, so it was quite good fun. Such a role model. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, from there though, after after doing the Olympics and, and, and winning, you win gold, yes? No, no, not. No, what, no. What, how does it work? What did you do oh, over there? I, I got. I I had two only two fights in that Olympic. Okay. The first one was the fight. I I, I got drawn with the Japanese first time. Okay. I was the only person that he didn't throw for a, for a full point. Mm -hmm. So everybody else that he fought. In the Olympics, he threw cleanly for a four point. He couldn't throw me because I'd lived there for one and a half so you, years. So you, you knew the I style. I was very okay with what they were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know the guy? Yeah, he yeah, was one of your oh, sparring yeah, no, partners. I, huh? I, I sparred with him a lot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so you ended up what winning your division or no? no just representing, yes. Re just representing. Well, yeah. still, I mean, come on. I mean, even even it doesn't matter win or in my eyes, <laughs> win or lose, and just getting to the Olympics <laughs> is wow. At 17, it's... Uh, well, it's mind-blowing. Yeah, mind 15, 15 oh. Tokyo and 17 at the Olympics. Yeah. Come on. Then what happened was, in the next Olympics, because obviously judo weren't in it... Which is what, 70... Uh, 70 no, 60... 67, 68. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't go through? Judo got... No, no. In, in 1964, it was in. So 73 then, years? Three years? No, four years. Four years. Then they pull it because it's not in Japan anymore? No. Wow. In 1968... They voted whether it was good enough the four years before to put in the Olympics. So in 1968, it was it was in Mexico. I um I went as a a demonstration sport. Uh -huh. So it was in. Then it was a demonstration sport to be voted back in. Oh wow! And then it was voted back in. So it went. So I went in 64, 68, then 72. Wow! Is um is the I went in 72 and then I went in 78 again as well. 72 was Munich, right? Munich, yeah. So oh. you were there from, wow, yeah. that was a heavy Olympic. Yeah, I, I was in the, the block next door to the wow. to the raid. Oh, wow. Uh, where the helicopters came over. And wow, wow, wow. That was a bit of a, yeah. yeah. In, in fact, I'll tell you, what happened was I'd won a bronze medal the day before. Wow. At the, the you know, they, they came in in the helicopters. And because I'd won a bronze medal, Puma, who I was wearing their gear, wearing their shoes and so on. I wasn't being paid because I was an amateur, but right. I was wearing their gear. Took me to the Puma Country Club, which is in, in Germany in any case. Mm -hmm. um, they got you out of there. And uh, I was out of there, yeah. So I didn't, 
I lived in the block next door to where it happened, but I didn't see a thing. I was very lucky. I weren't there. Very lucky. Yeah. Very lucky. What's What's one of the great experiences you would say that you took away from the, the, the Olympics, uh, what, you, what, what you were in? Anything well, that stands out in your mind, it, besides being there, of course? It, that's a fantastic question, because when you, when you tell people that you're in a village <clears throat> that nobody else can get into, unless you have a special pass <laughs> or card, you're on a spe- you, you, you're locked in the village. Mm. In the village itself, there's like thirty different restaurants, so you can have any type of food you want from anywhere in the world. And it didn't cost any; you never had to pay. Mm. It was all paid for. In the evening, there were there were film shows. There were um, you know TVs that you could watch. You could play games in one place. Discos going on. It was just like a. It, it, it was a phenomenal experience. City, was a city within a city. Yeah. And everybody you bumped into was from a different country. You could never tell. And everybody got they on, could of speak course. speak English. It was wonderful. Mm. The whole atmosphere. It's a shame the world's like that now. It's a shame no, that the world isn't no, like that exactly, now. Exactly right. Which we'll we, we, we get on to a bit. Congratulations on all that because, I mean, we've spoke over the years, but we haven't got in depth. So, I mean, I, I, you know, I... Brilliant! I, I admire you. I like the I like the train bit though because that brings back memories of what I did. <laughs> but um, going from going from the Olympics, being in the Olympics, of course, you progressed on to what after that? I mean, where did where did where did that lead you up? Well, I, I, obviously, I, I won um, medals in Great Britain. I won medals in Europe. I won medals in um, the World Championships. I won medals in the Olympics. Um, and I was becoming. I was getting to the stage where I'd had enough. Of competing, I was still number one mm. in Britain, but I was—I just got to that stage at 35 years old where you think, you know, I've done what I wanted I've, to do. Yeah, from, yeah. I mean, from yeah. 15 to mm. 35 is is a long and being thrown around be, and for a few time million to be times. In the British team, yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I thought, well, what am I going to do? How am I going to earn money for the rest of my life? I'd, I'd never had anything. Never. I mean, I used to run to the judo club, eight miles. Because you know, the Olympics wasn't highly paid or paid no, or anything, was it? I mean, you didn't it was, get any money at I mean, all. It's, it's a great a statue, but it's not actually... Not a penny. Yeah. I used to run from my house to the judo club in England to train. Mm. And I'd, I'd run with a complete wetsuit on, eight, eight miles. But Dad would be there, he was teaching, mm. and he'd take me back in it. So everything I did was without money I didn't know what money was and mm. I'm now I'm at the age of like 35 when I'm thinking what the hell am I going to do in my life you know I've got nothing I've got no, no, nothing not a thing and um, I thought well I've got, I've got to do something I've got to do something so my love of sport took me into um, into college I went into college and became a PE teacher Stay there. We'll just take a quick uh, few seconds, all right? Certainly. Yeah. We're going to come back to you in the college. If you want to drink, please uh, help yourself. Lovely. Thank you. Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand. With your host, Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com. Welcome back to Paddy and welcome back to Paddy, Thailand. And in the studio today, of course, as per normal, Bobby at the end on Mission Control. Liking it so far, Bobby? I'm loving it. I'm learning a lot too. Loving it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you see you're regretting what you said earlier, aren't you? Is I wanted good? to ask him one, I want to ask Brian one question. Go for How it. How far does uh, judo go back in the history of Japan, well, where do they trace it back to? Uh, okay, so uh, completely the, the beginning. Oh, let's start at the beginning. So it, it's a very difficult question to answer, but let's start at the beginning. The Japanese had swords; they never had any guns or anything like that. Um, and you know the story of the Seven Samurai. Yeah. Well, that story is so real. That that is where judo started. What what happened was the the village got raided. They they got people there that could help them because they didn't know how to fight. So the people that they hired in the village in mm. the Seven Samurai taught them how to take the sword off of someone. I mean, for instance, for instance, it, in judo, if I if I throw you on the floor, I, I might get half a point or a quarter of a point. Or if you land on your back, I'll get a full point. That ends the contest. But let's say I only get half a point. Then I can hold you on the floor. Now, what does it mean? What, so you can't get up for 30 seconds. But that comes from your question. The villagers 
would get the bad guys that came in. They, one of them would throw them on the floor. The other one would hold them down while somebody else came along and tied them up. That was basically that was how Judo was The beginning uh, of. Yeah, but that, that was then, at that <coughs> time, called Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. Because mm. they, Judo is, the, Do means the way, gentle. But Jiu-Jitsu is not, is not gentle. It's like taking someone's sword off them, taking their lance, you know, the big long lances off them, taking their bows off them. Um, you know, locking the locking them, putting them to sleep, mm. so that somebody else can. So there you go. If you call him old again, he's not going to be gentle. <laughs> Have you got the drift now? He's pretty so, gentle. <laughs> so that that's basically how judo started from you know, from the Seven Samurais. That, that wow. is the interesting. Story, yeah, yeah. Let Great. me take. It's okay. You okay with that? I'm okay. Are you happy that. now? Yeah. Have you, are, are, are you? You've, I'm happier. Your little taste buds are okay yeah. now. <laughs> good, good. Taking you back to the, the the college and 35 years old, no money in the pocket. I mean, what can we say? As they say, not even no chump change to do oh, anything. That's right. I mean, that was it. That was basically it. Um, Where did you go from there? To, did, well, to make to some college. money. To make I, some money. I did the four years at college. I qualified um, as a school teacher. Went into a school. I did a year and a half in the first school, and I, then I opened the newspaper, and. Um, the, the, and I saw a job advertised for a college lecturer, scale one. Well, I didn't want to teach in a school of kids, so I wanted to go to college and teach in a college. So I phoned this number that I had no clue what it was, <laughs> and the guy on the other end of the phone said, uh, and I recognised his voice, that was the crazy thing. I thought, I know this voice. And he said, um, Mr Jax, he said, uh, do you think you could handle a college Teaching, teaching in a college? So I said, yeah. I said, do I know your voice? He said, Brian, it's your teacher. <laughs> it was my school teacher when I was at school, when I was 15, when I was, wow. before I was 15 years old. He was, at the, he was the head of the college that wanted someone to go to work there. So needless to say, that I got the job quite easily. I was going to say, <laughs> did you get the job? Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I had the job. I'd been in the job for exactly nine months, and then I had a phone call from the BBC mm. saying, would I like to go into Superstars? And I said, I'd love to do it. Well, when, you know, when is it? Uh, Where was well, – I mean, so the Superstars for – well, Bobby – Bobby, you don't know this. I mean, I can, can you just explain to Bobby and the people out there what was Superstars? Before we, okay, we, we, Bobby, we do, you, do you know Joe Theismann? Yeah. Joe Theismann's a fantastic... The ath- football player, ath- Joe Theismann? Joe Theismann, the football player. Yeah. He, he was in the Superstars and I competed against him. Wow. And uh, he came he fifth. He was the real deal. He came fifth. Wow. <laughs> he came fifth? <laughs> Where did you come? <laughs> just wanted to tell you that... <laughs> That's because you <laughs> said he was old earlier. <laughs> but you, you had superstars in America. Joe Theismann and loads of the famous football players. And, um, oh, did they? Yeah, what, what that, that, they, they take the mickey out of our game of rounders, don't they? What they call it? Badminton? Oh, uh, baseball. 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 Well, that's it. Yeah, they take the mickey out of rounders, don't they? Rounders. Yeah, a lot of the baseball players were in it. I competed in America three or four times in the Bahamas in America and uh, all over the world. In so the when, when uh, just for people that don't, the format... <clears throat> you're asked to go by the BBC. You're asked to be in the superstars to represent just yourself. Re- no, to represent myself. Just yeah. represent yourself. Okay. Against uh, other great sportsmen in Great Britain, okay. obviously. So the format was there was certain things that everybody had to do, wasn't it, if I remember rightly? Yeah, yeah, there was you, a few things. Had, yeah, you had 10 different events, mm-hmm. um, 10 different sports events cycling, swimming, canoeing, weightlifting, might be archery, crossbow, football, anything. They changed it all the time, but you had 10 different... Well, I was a PE teacher, mm-hmm. so I mean... I remember. It was great for me, because I, I, I loved doing it. Um, mm. So, that was the format. But if you were a long-distance runner, you weren't allowed in the long-distance running. If you were a sprinter, you weren't allowed in the sprints and so mm. on. If you were a table tennis player, you mm. weren't allowed to play, or whatever was in it, if you'd done that sport, you weren't allowed to do it. So, out of the 10 sports, you picked eight that you wanted to do... Mm. If one of them was your own sport, you had to drop out. So we had eight different sports to do, and then you competed against each other in the eight sports. Basically. I, can, I can remember talking to somebody that you might know. His name was Shaw Taylor. Shaw sure, Taylor. If you yeah. remember, he used yeah, to do the yeah. police program. Yeah, right, yeah. And he said, "Have you seen that blonde-haired dude that's on there in the white T-shirt doing his push-ups? <laughs> God, he's good." <laughs> 
I can remember that years ago because I mean you were known for that, weren't you? You were yeah, known. It was the arm dips. The arm yeah. dips. Sorry, the arm dips. Yeah, on the parallel bars. Yeah, you were known for that. Yeah. Well, you can imagine. I was a PE teacher, so I was in the in the yeah. gym in the school, and I was on the all the parallel bars every day. How long did some superstars run for? Can you remember? Well, I, I think it ran for eight years. I, and, I, and were you in it for eight years? I or? was in it for for four. Four. Okay. Enjoyable though. I mean, it was like uh, what was what was the other one that was really good in the UK at that time? Um, a knockout, yeah. It's a knockout. It's a knockout. Yeah. I mean, that, that was great as well. That was all uh, happening. Same time. Yeah. So, okay. So you've got no money. You become a teacher. Yeah. You, and suddenly you've got a bit of a salary coming in. And you, yeah. You've got a bit and of money. Then I got the job in the in the university. In the university. So now you're beginning to earn some money. Yeah. And I thought then, it was great. <laughs> then I get the phone call from, from BBC. Super, see, which you don't. Superstars, which you get paid for that. Uh, did you make any money from it? What the superstars? Yeah. Um, you, well, I'll tell you exactly what the. Contract no, don't tell was. me exactly. The, you got a five hundred pound entry fee. Okay. So just to go in it, they gave you five hundred pound. Okay. If you came first, you got two thousand five hundred less the five hundred that they gave you. Which if you came the... second, you got one thousand five uh, two thousand. If you came third, you got one thousand five hundred fourth, you, and so on. But it was always less than 500 that they gave you. So first prize was two, two five, half, less than five, two. Yeah. So that was two thousand pounds. So it was good then. I mean, for that for that year. I mean, for what when it first started. I mean, it was cool, wasn't it? Yeah, but it cost me more than that to train. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you got the money back. That it cost you to train. Well, you imagine. I mean, you know, people, we had crossbow in it. We had pistol shooting. I bought a pistol. I bought a crossbow. Well, my dad bought it. You mm, know. Mm. Um, I had to have special shoes made for the gym test. I, I you have. Yeah, I had, a, I had to buy a canoe to train in. I had to buy a bicycle to train on. So the money that they gave me was absolutely nothing. It was nothing. gone anyway, yeah. Where the money came in was from the spin-offs of the TV programme it's, itself. Sponsorships too? Sponsorship and um, people asking you to do personal appearances. Yeah, because, I mean, we, we speak about this, me and Bobby speak about this, don't we? Like, you know, the, the let's take... We're going we're gonna to come to the, the, the Rolling Stones in a minute because you've got a, a connection there, yeah? But we came to the Rolling Stones the other day and we were talking how much money the Rolling Stones earn for performing, yeah? Yeah. But from their merchandise um, and, and other stuff at the side, it's two times greater than the money that they do from oh, a concert. Well, yeah, exactly. it's, it's, it's immense. I mean, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. I mean, when you become... When you became into the superstars and people begin to know you, yeah, you're walking down the street and they go, "That's Brian Jacks. This is that. This is this." I mean, surely the offers start to flood in, then. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, how do you pick and choose, or well, did you just take everything? Remember, this, we're, we're talking about 1979, yeah, 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 yeah. I know where you are. Yeah. Um, but the first contract I got was with a clothing company, um, but that was for thirty thousand pounds a year. I mean, it's, it's, you know, when you look yeah, back on yeah. it. It, it's not a lot of money, but then I opened Lily White's in Piccadilly, for instance. Yeah. In, um, you know, Lily White's shop. Mm -hmm. And that I got about four thousand pound for, which was a lot of money. I then, thought somebody would have got you for a shampoo advert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the curly hair, naked in the shower with the I tell you, remember that? Can you remember the girl that used to do that? The Johnsons hair used to be naked in the shower. And, <laughs> yeah, and, oh, I tell you what, as a young boy, I look forward to that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I thought somebody would have got you for that one. Uh, no, Lily White, yeah, yeah, Lily White. So. I mean, the spin-offs from the superstars were very mm. good, and that's what did that. That's what put me up. I mean, that's what gave me some money. You know, yeah. I mean, so the initial, the initial money that you was in the superstars and what you got, you spent on everything. But, but it was but from it judo, was we got nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah, but that's, did, did you did you ever? Can I ask you this? Did you ever earn any money from judo? No. Wow. Not nothing. Penny. In the, in the competition, even sense. even if I if you know, even if, I mean as British champion. I, mean, I was British champion for something like I think it was sixteen years. Mm. Um, even from being British champion, you might get asked to to go and teach at a club up in Scotland or somewhere. Oh, so it wasn't it wasn't like the superstar no, thing at all. No, it was just it was, there was no money there at all, nothing. That's, I find that amazing that you like you're there for sixteen years. You're well known. Uh, what about at the stage of when you you did that and then you did the superstars? I mean, surely that got a lot easier then, and, and you started to make money, yeah, from from that. I yeah, mean, from the from, from the appearances at the superstars. Yeah. And what did Definitely. you do after the superstars? I mean, what, which direction did you take? Did you still go well, back to the, the teaching? Um, no. What? what <laughs> so I, I'd, I'd obviously given up the teaching from you know being a school teacher or. Mm -hmm. or a, a, Electra, um, did the promotions at the Superstars, which kept me going money-wise, 
And then from there, I um, I came here. Oh, to Thailand. Lawrence. So we're talking. How long have you been here now in Thailand? Twenty-one years. Oh, twenty-one years then. Mm. And you have the uh, apartments, don't you now? Yeah, we've got is view, that, view the apartments. Yeah. Is that where is that where you first were when you came here, or, or, or no? No, I, I. What happened was I, I um, just before I came here, I, I had a judo club, mm-hmm. um, a little club in Orpington near where I lived, um, and uh, it became so popular. We had all the British junior squad there. Most of the seniors came from my club. They're all, you know, they're all followers. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, I was like the Pied Piper, I suppose, of judo, but. Mm-hmm. Um, Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, ha- we but then I started getting ha- hassle from the government. The, I, I, I got the lease to the building. I was, pro- I was providing a service. UK. In the UK. Mm. I was providing a service for the, for the local people. Mm. We had a massive following of judo people in the club and so on. And then one day I had a knock on the door and the lady, this lady came in. She said, um... I'm from the health and safety department at the <laughs> London Borough of Bromley. So I said, oh, really? What, what do you want? She said, oh, I just want to have a look. What, what, what's that, she said. I said, well, what do you think it is? <laughs> I said, it's a fridge. It's a little <laughs> little fridge. It was only, I'm glad uh, you said a fridge. <laughs> it's only, only three foot high. I said, what the bloody hell do you think it is? I said, it's a fridge. She said, what's in it? I said, well, <laughs> Things to keep cold. Have a guess. Have a guess. Have a guess. And as it happened, <laughs> as it happened, the only thing that was in this little three foot high fridge was a bottle of milk that I used to yeah. make my tea with before I taught the kids judo. Um, so basically, what I'm saying, is I, I provided this service for the council. They gave me the Freedom of Bromley. I had this special award, mm-hmm. the Freedom of Bromley. Then they send this woman round, and then she goes in the to- in, in the men's toilet. She said, well, which is the hot and cold tap? I said, darling, the hot one has got the red thing on it and the cold one's got the blue thing on it. Duh. She said, I want something on the wall here to say that this is hot water. Oh. She said, how, how on earth will people not... Unbelievable, yeah. So then she said, I want it in Braille as well. I said, you're joking. I said, blind people don't normally do judo. <laughs> <laughs> I said, and all you got to do is. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, anyway, so sh- she came and went, and I, it, I think I'm thinking to myself, they've they've given me the lease of this building, yeah, and it, it's a beautiful building. And now the chef you. I'm, and now, and then four days later, you can't you can't make this up. Four days later, two guys come and they've got white clothes on with white masks. A bit like COVID, you know, with just their eyes shine. <laughs> and it, they come in, we're from the London Borough of Bromby, we've come to do a, a, a test on asbestos because the building was prefabricated. It was the dining, yeah. it was the dining halls from the people that come back from the Somme during the, during mm-hmm, the war. Mm-hmm. So I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, well, we want to test for um, asbestos. asbestos. I said, well, wait, wait there. Just stay there. Well, I had one of these phones on the wall, you know, that you put the money in. It's mm-hmm. a big handle. So I phoned the council. I got hold of the, I got hold of John Whitman, who was the boss of the council, who, rent, who, who gave me the lease. And I said, John, I said, I've got two of your guys here. They're all dressed in white. They look, like, they look like doctors, but they're obviously, you know, they've obviously come to check for uh, asbestos. I said, let me just tell you something. If they find asbestos in this building, I'm going to sue the arse off you. Because if you've rented me a building for twenty odd years that's got asbestos in it, I won't be very happy. Neither will my solicitor. Anyway, wow. Give me the give, give the guy. Uh, they went. <laughs> they see the end but of. I mean, stupid. But that, it, that was why I came to Thailand, or one of the reasons. The, the second reason I came to Thailand is because when I came, um, I was in Japan in 1971. I was on my way back to after training for you know for the Olympics. Mm. I was on my way back to London, and the the plane landed in Bangkok. And fortunately for me, very fortunately, the plane broke down, and we had to stay here two nights while they sent a new plane. Deadly so that, that is, Brian. That is so deadly. Two that, nights. That was my that was my introduction <laughs> in 1971 to to Thailand. So after the the incident with the, the council and all that, and this health and safety shit that they came oh, yeah. up with. I um, thought that's it. I, I thought I'd love to go back to mm-hmm. Thailand because mm. it was so much like Japan when I was there in '64. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. But this was ten years later. Mm. You know, 
that I'd been the second time and it was very much like Japan and I just had an attraction to it and I came back and spent two months here went back home for two months came back for two months went back home for two months and came back over for good that was it that was it job done yeah and you've and been it's, it's the best thing I've ever done I'm totally in agreement with you, and of course, I'm, I'm, there's other guys in this uh, room now with us, and I'm sure they're all in agreement. No, I, I mean, mean you, sorry, but I, it's okay. But I, I'm very patriotic, and I, I, I've been in four Olympic games in the country. I've won all European championships umpteen times, mm. but um, they've been sold down the river. Mm. I mean, Britain's been. It's gone, mate. Britain's been stuffed by these bloody politicians. I'm it's, sorry, but it is. you know it's finished. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm, I'm not a you know a racialistic person, but it's finished. I mean, the whole country is finished. I can see. I can see what's. Uh, I watched a program last night. You know, the, the, I mean, Steve uh, may know, or, or Bobby may know this, but in England now they get this money at the moment <laughs> while the COVID's on. They get um, X amount of money from the companies at the moment. Yeah, which soon ends in the UK. Uh, that they're going to put a stop to it. Plus, I just don't understand how this is happening in the UK because I can see the people in the UK, from the UK, blowing. It's going to boil up. It's going to... Yeah, it's, it's going to go. Gonna, it's going to explode. So my, my friend said to me, he said, well, if, you've got, if you ever have to leave Thailand and you want to get looked after, he says, buy yourself a blow-up dingy and get yourself into Dover well, and they'll I mean, give you a hotel and 26 grand a year. Yeah, but that is the most ridiculous... <laughs> it's nuts, That is mate. the most ridiculous thing Ever. It's nuts. And how uh, people, please don't call me. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, 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 I like people from all over the world. I love people. From, but you've got to look after your own first before you Absolutely. look after everybody else. And they just aren't freaking well doing it. They're not doing it. My friend, my friend is in the Leicestershire Constabulary, yeah? And he told me this. This is what he told me. He says, now, this is where it's got to, okay? He said, now, when they, stu- they stop a truck and they open the doors and it's full of everybody from everywhere from around the world, yeah? He says, we can't take them now. We can't look after them now. So they give them an A4 piece of paper with directions on how to get back to Dover. How many people do you think turn around and follow the map and go back to Dover? <laughs> I mean, that's nuts, isn't it? <laughs> COVID, let's, let's talk. We, we, we can have five or ten minutes on COVID. Lovely. What do you think? Of the, have you liked it so far? Oh, we, oh okay. Is he all right yeah. now? Is he okay? He's lovely. That's <laughs> you're in, mate. You're in. <laughs> Started off very bad, but you're okay now. <laughs> <laughs> COVID. Now he's going to jump in on this because he, he's he's the same as what I feel about this. What is your feeling at the moment on what's happening in the world? Say it straight. There's no problem on here. No no well, no punches pulled. It's very simple. Um, to me, it's very very simple. I I am 74 years old. I think I'm I think I'm fairly fit. Um, I wear this stupid bloody mask everywhere because I've been told to wear it. But I, I, I don't know anybody here that's got it. I don't know anybody here that's had it. I don't know any of my friends that know anybody that's knows anybody else that's had it or got it. I, I just can't understand it. But it seems to, but it seems to me very simple. It seems, it seems to me that if you are a sick person, generally speaking, you're not healthy. Mm. There's something wrong with you. Maybe you've, you know, you've got this, that, or the other wrong with you, and you're getting on a bit. Um, you catch a cold, it hits you even worse than anything Absolutely, else. 100%. If, if you catch this little bug, COVID, whatever it is that's going around, it's got to hit you worse. Mm. And then all I keep doing is reading on, on um, social media about people that, you know, people that, for goodness sake, I've got it, I haven't got it, I've got it, I haven't got it, I've got it. I've got it. There's nothing, is it? Nothing. No. I mean, you, you, you're with us on this, aren't you, Bobby? You don't believe in it, with you. It's a load of bullshit, isn't it? Come on, tell the truth. BS. It's BS. It's bullshit. It is bullshit. It's bullshit. I'm, I'm absolutely sure. You, do you know what we said the other day, didn't we, on, on, on the podcast? We said the other day, can you imagine this bride going back in time and having the flu, right, for the first time when the flu came out for the first time and having social media then? Oh. What do you think the world would, would be like been, then? It would, have been terrible, it would have been a disaster. Black death, black death, black, black death. death. Send, uh, send, 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 send. Wouldn't but, it, huh? But you've hit the nail on the head where I was going to finish off. It is social media. It it's is. these bloody it is. telephones that people, it is. You know, people seem to want to eat that keeps giving you this shit that comes out AI, the isn't time. it, Bobby? The AI. Yeah, precur- a- AI precursor for sure. We're yeah. heading to full-on AI, and this whole thing is to get everyone in line, compliance, do it our way. Or else, don't play the game. No, I think it's right. I think you're dead right. Um, I, I just very quickly mm. every morning I go cycling. I keep very fit. I think 
I mean, the, the listeners must appreciate that the most important thing in your life is your health and, hap- and your health. Mm. If you keep fit, if you take the right kind of <laughs> don't, don't keep looking. At, don't keep so looking. Every at, time you say, keep, keep looking at that looking. balloon over there. <laughs> if you keep, if you keep fit and keep yourself uh, healthy, yeah, all right, that is the most important thing. Absolutely. Once you've done that, the rest uh. of it should just fall into place. We, we cycle every morning. We, we you know, I, I play golf a lot. I swim a lot. I do. I keep exercising a lot. Keep active. Yeah, and keep active. Keep healthy. Eat good food. If you can't eat good food, eat nice. Um, you know, um, uh, vitamin pills and stuff like that. Take, you know, extra tablets, and then you should be okay. I, none of my friends know anybody that's got COVID. We don't do it. We've, we've asked every everybody that's, since we've been doing this show and more. We've asked everybody, haven't we, uh, Bobby? Uh, that anybody does anybody know anybody that's had it? Mm-hmm. And we can't come up with one person yet, can we? Mm-hmm. No, I can't either. Really. Yeah. He's, he's like he's like he's like we don't I, want to I'm start in agreement with you I'm, I'm we can go down the rabbit hole but i'm i'm in agreement with yeah, we don't we, we don't want to go down the rabbit hole because we just get that and it gets yeah. us all worked up and then we start yeah we'll get worked up here we get worked up and i get into a but sweat. i agree with you the immune system is is the most important uh aspect of the human yeah, condition sure, yeah. and experience if your immune system is weak weak forget about it yeah you're gonna get you're gonna get nobbled yeah, yeah. Sure. To it. sure yeah Sure, sure, sure. Um, antibiotics, most antibiotics aren't even working anymore. I, I hate taking antibiotics. Yeah. I don't think I've taken any for So when they throw antibiotics years. at you, they don't work. That's the big problem. And that is actually a huge problem for, uh, for the planet. You know, I mean, if you eat loads of vitamin B, if you eat loads of vitamin C, if you eat loads of decent vitamin E foods, then you should be okay. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't yeah. have a problem. Mm. I agree. I agree with that, and he's 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 trying to convert me anyway. So yeah, he's doing a good job. It's inspired my little <laughs> my little upset. Uh, Brian Jackson, what's the future for you? Are you just relaxing now and taking it easy and up at view D, and um, that's it. Uh, yeah, is there I, anything in the future? I, I read your book, by the way. Uh, the, uh, the, I enjoyed writing the book. I thought it was a wonderful experience. And mm. um, no, I, I I think you get to a certain age where you all I want to do now is just enjoy my life. I just mm. want to do the things I want to do. Mm. And forget anybody that pressures me into doing anything. I don't. Want, I don't want to do anything that you know that I don't want to do, and that's it. Finish. Remember to take the ankles off him as he leaves today. By the way, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true, isn't it? You yeah, I, I agree. Get on with your own I, life I, I, and enjoy you. yourself. I'm with you. I mean, the the the, the problem is uh, is this, right? And this is how I see things: that we spend most of our life trying to please other people, and don't take time out for ourselves. Sure, and as right. soon as you become into like uh, my friends in uh, over there would would tell you. You change as soon as your family. You have a family. Things change. Your perspective change on life. Your outlook looks on life. But the the thing that's come out of everything that's happening now with COVID is, it just shows you how fragile we all are. Oh, we are. Everybody's fragile. everybody's fragile, and it's easy to uh, let's say just uh, make us believe what they want us oh, to sure. believe. Yeah. Well, I think we're very lucky. I think we're lucky we to live here. Um, I think Thailand, although there's a lot of things I don't. I don't like about Thailand, which you, mm-hmm. you can like or you don't like. Mm. I love Thailand, but there's a lot of things I don't like. But I think they've got it right. Don't let anybody in. Don't let anybody let them out. But don't let them back in and, mm. uh, until it's all over. That's it. Well, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it will change for for the better soon and uh, and for the Thai people as well, because uh, they they need some kind of income from what they used to do before. So hopefully we look on the bright side yeah. and it starts to improve. Yeah, sure it will. Did you enjoy sure. today? Fantastic. Yeah, it's been. Did you like it? been a pleasure to so it wasn't hey, anything hey like Brian it. next time you come in let's prepare some photographs I'd love to see uh, some photographs and media of your your work and yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. we can let's set do we, that. Can uh, play, we can set it up again loads of photographs here yeah, yeah we can set something up can't we, we can come I, in and just have a chat anytime yeah. Photographs of can the you ro- send got loads of photographs of the Rolling Stones. On there. Yeah, well, what was what was that? Can we just can we just get to that now before you go? What was that? The, the Rolling Stones connection with 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 it yeah, was, it's just that um um was it with yeah. your dad or somebody? No, or? no, it's just that he was my teacher. I mean, okay. Joe, Joe Jagger was my teacher at college. Which is his dad, isn't it? Jagger's dad. dad. Yeah. Jagger's dad. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Joe Jagger is a lovely, lovely, lovely man. One of the most, one of the, one of the nicest person people I've ever met. I'll tell you a quick funny story before I finish. I'm, uh, after the first year at college, I wasn't I very good at writing things down and mm. I, I realised that it was very easy to ask somebody else that's been at college <laughs> the year before you to if you could copy their essays. <laughs> anyway, I, cop- I, I copied it, I'm owning up to it, I copied this essay 
Uh, it was about 10,000 words that I borrowed off of a friend of mine that was a matured student the year before. And I finished the essay and I, th- I picked it up. I ripped it to pieces and I threw it in the bin. Mm. And I sat down and I wrote from my heart. Interesting. Then about three weeks later, um, Joe called me in, called everybody in the office. And you know, after the first year, mm. you get and sit down. And I got in the office and I looked across the desk. As you do. At my, essay, <laughs> my, my essay that I'd written from my heart that I really thought, and it was freaking bread lines all over it and marks all down the side of it. And, everything. and I, I thought, oh Christ, this is ridiculous. And he said to me, Mr. Jacks, you can't fucking spell. <laughs> <laughs> but. I'm giving you A minus, which is the highest mark I've given this year. Wow. He said, there's two people that have got it, you and someone else. And he said, let me tell you why. He said, because you haven't written from what you've read in other books. You've written from what... You wanted to write from the heart. You wanted yeah. to write from the heart. He mm. said, and that's it. And they gave you the A minus for that one. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Well done. We're, we're, giving, we're giving you A plus for today, if that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's been a any time, pl- I'll be in any time you want. It's been I'll a pleasure be today. Uh, we, we'll put all the links on on, on the website uh, to, to view D and everything, and of course, uh, put all, uh, some pictures on as well. But Lovely. It's been great. Enjoyed it. Thank you very much, yes? Lovely. Thank good, good, you. good, 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 good. Well done. The Talking Heads podcast live from Pattaya, Thailand, with your host, Dave D. Join us weekdays. Check out all the latest updates on talkingheads-podcast.com.